I am so excited to introduce to you, if you do not know, Eric Johnston. We, we have a hero among us. Eric Johnston um, runs the Southeast Law Institute. He also helped us on our transgender bill. He is, let me tell you why he is a hero. He wrote the strongest abortion bill in the land. And when Roe v. Wade was, when Roe v. Wade was overturned, the law he wrote had already been passed and Alabama became the first state in the nation to outlaw abortion. We love him. He does amazing work. He's at the State House a lot. He is uh, one of the most humble guys. He is not out there in the front looking for attention. He's quietly working on legislation and just doing amazing things. And we love you, Eric. Come up and tell us about, yes, uh, abortion is outlawed in Alabama, but it can still happen. And so what are we doing about that? Come on up and Iva will give you the flashcards. Well, you have 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that welcome. It's always good to speak to the Eagle Forum ladies. The Eagle Forum is so important in the efforts in the State House. So I thank you ladies for that. And I guess I ought to think, thank you men who identify as Eagle Forum ladies for your work. I noticed there are a lot of you here today, but thank you for your work. Um, I know that probably most of you to one extent or another are familiar with the abortion issue, but let me give you some context that help understand the two laws, bills that we want to introduce uh, this session. When we did the Alabama Human Life Protection Act, we addressed the issue as the unborn child being a person entitled to protection under the law. Uh, we hope that, that that bill, that law, or one like it would be the one to get to the Supreme Court because we knew there was a change on the court. There was justices there who may address Roe. Well, the Mississippi law got there first. It did not address personhood. And although we are thankful that Roe was overturned, it just sent it back to the states. And what that did is it made it a multifaceted issue, an issue that's not going to go away. You know, we spent almost 50 years trying to reverse Roe, and we finally did. And you've got to know that the other side is not going to give up. And you, if you follow politics at all, and you look at the elections and things around the country, you see what's happened. The Democrats have put abortion as one of the number one issues, and they win on that issue. So we have to be aware of these other facets. So in Alabama, we've got a law that says you cannot do a surgical or a chemical abortion. More and more abortions are done by abortion producing drugs. It's a crime. It's a class A felony. It's very serious. But drugs are coming into the state from out of the country, from India primarily, through a doctor in the Netherlands who runs this program, so to speak. There's several websites that you can go to over the internet to obtain these drugs. Now these places are beyond the jurisdiction of the laws of Alabama. There's no treaty, there's no law that would allow our state to indict those people. So how do you stop those drugs from coming in? Well, we got the idea that maybe we could do like we do with uh, online gambling, online alcohol, online obscenity, that we restrict it over the internet. And so we prepared a bill, and what it says is, is that the internet providers cannot provide a platform, an application, that permits people in Alabama to order drugs over the internet. And the, and the second part is that it does not permit the pay mechan mechanism, such as credit cards, to pay for these because they're not going to send the drugs for free. So we've, we've done this bill in this way. We've made it a penalty against the internet providers. And, you know, they're not the, uh, the um, objective of this law if we can get it passed. We want them to cooperate with us. And so they, they're not automatically penalized because they may be having uh, an internet site available in Alabama. But once they know that one of those is there and they're put on notice, then they have to take it down. If they don't take it down, then they'll be fined and there's some criminal penalties as well. But we thought the fining thing was a very good thing because each time that they fulfilled a, a, a a, uh, a drug application or request is a $10,000 fine. So if after they're put on notice and they do this, every time they sell a drug over the internet, $10,000, that $10,000 goes half to the Attorney General's office to help fund his uh, uh, watching over the internet. The other half will go to the Pregnancy Resource Centers to fund them. 
And, and that's related to the other bill. We filed last year a tax credit bill for pregnancy resource centers. It did not pass, along with a lot of other tax credit bills. It was not because it dealt with abortion. It was just because the legislature didn't want to give up the tax dollars. Hopefully this year they'll be a little more lenient with us and, they'll, and they know they've got a lot of money and so they'll let this bill pass. And it gives a tax credit for people who make contributions to pregnancy resource centers because we want the women to be ministered to. We don't want to charge women with murder. It's a complex legal, political, medical issue and it's different in every state. And so that's the many facets to it and we have to deal with those on a continuing basis. As I said, the other side's not gonna give up but we're not gonna give up either. And we just keep on fighting. Every time a new issue comes up or a new facet comes up, we will deal with it. So we are hopeful that th these two bills will pass. Uh, I think you heard about gambling already today. It's gonna be a very tough session. It's gonna be very tough for all of us who stand on the conservative side of issues. If we vote one way on, on some of these issues, it may be held against us on other issues. So we've got to work hard and try to get around these things. So, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer those. Hello. Oh, there you go. Thanks. Uh, great work, as always. Um, I hope I misheard you, because I don't know if you knew it or not, but um, a year ago, Tennessee passed a law that Ivermectin be sold over the counter, and a few months ago, our state board of pharmacy sent them a cease and desist letter from sending it into our state. I hope that you, you just are including the afford efficient Goals, not all medicines. No, it's just for patients. Primary two products. Yes, yes. And one of those goals to be at other better applications. And it does not affect free speech. It's got an exception there for free speech as well. It's, it involves those who are actually selling tape. It's not just someone advocates. We didn't stop that. We need to be in Georgia to advocate for it. We go get for it. So now, Brandon, you can still advocate, but you can't do it. So it's fun to draw a very fine line to get around its constitutional issues. Yes, it's in. Air. I didn't realize that you were the one that offered that bill. Thank you. And I agree with your physicians, absolutely. But one thing that we're getting guilt of as conservatives is messages you know, on this. We, with Conservative USA, when we, we wrote our platform, I helped foster the portion in it that um, used the person but definition as an abortion argument. How do we separate the issue of women's health care and other issues with abortion and make sure that we have a message folks to understand that abortion is not birth control because something with the difference hook up the left is absolutely acknowledging us on messaging. But how do we change the messaging to got if you have the insight? Well the the best is very hard and that's in the political <laughs> things I I mentioned. But they can change their presentation to be talking about choice again, not about abortion. They talk about choice, health care choosing, and this, that type of thing. And that's difficult. I mean, and that is a hard issue that the people that the Republican Party, for their candidates, need to face in making the state And it's in Alabama, we've got constitutional amendment that it takes the person to be a full time. And the Alabama Human Rights Protection Act makes it a crime thing that locks, so we make it clear. On that, but I think in Alabama right like now we're in good shape. But you know, our generation, my generation, some of your generation, they'll go away. New people will cost. There'll be new differences. The station will not go away. It's going to be there, and we've got to work hard and thank you, big people, and not give up. Oh, long stay. Thank you, see. This. Thank you, Mr. Katz. Look how Chad been doing for us. I didn't have my question on the Protection Act. Does it state that the unborn child has a soul and a body than a human being? Are we defining clearly that this unborn child is a human being and should be upheld in our constitution? Okay. And should be upheld in the constitution. Is was in the Human Life Protection Act, is the baby considered a human? I think the Alabama Human Life Protection Act it is very thrilled. But the Mississippi law that the Dodge decision was based on, built for years ago, was a 15 week bill. It does not address personhood. And yet the Supreme Court, as I said, they old rule broke with that for that, since they said that back in the states. We had hoped that the Supreme Court would just say, Rose said it was an unborn child, was about protecting the Constitution. We, we were hoped that they'd carry around and say, well, they had kids of the Constitution, and he is protecting. 
but I don't foresee it into it in the foreseeable future that that's going to attract people will not be his position for a long time. Had we beat Mississippi to the Supreme Court, we would be talking something completely different. Boston, we knew we were a good representative. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of issues of viability, and number of weights, and all those kinds of things, and we we didn't address all those. We addressed in person, but they're not just you know some time to come towards. Them. But unfortunately, that was the fate that got paid. Well, it was a wonderful bill. Thank you for all your great work, and you keep going. Yeah. All the halls, right?